What's the weather like, Ollie? Space weather! Thanks, Ollie. Good morning, folks. The days without solar-enhanced activity finally come to a close. We've got top science news, details on weather disasters, new Hawaii volcano data, and more. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com and find the quiet last 24 hours on the Earth facing half of the sun. The bright spots facing Earth are small and silent. Meanwhile, top left, you can see the signatures of another one turning in. We've been eyeing the northern coronal hole system too. While its trailing portion faces Earth tonight, the lead swung through four days ago and last night its solar wind hit Earth. Up top in blue, the magnetic presentation of the solar wind flipped, leading to a brief rise in density, orange below that, and when that gave way we saw the faster and hotter stream arrive, yellow and green in the bottom panels. A geomagnetic storm did crop up, but only briefly last night. Barely even call it a storm condition, more like instability. Had some solid magnetic perturbations building through the event, however, luckily not in high-grid complexity regions. But then in the geoelectric potential, it looks like we did take some modest energy, and then in a reverberation this morning, we got about halfway up the chart, still about 20 to 50 times weaker than what would make us worry. And here's another way to see that something everyone should know. Smooth curves on the left are the daily variation, but last night's ding took us from a 50 nanotesla diurnal cycle to double that, about a 100 nanotesla drop. Compare this to a storm expected to cause a few electric problems speckled across the globe. You can see this is a much stronger deviation. And when things get scary for large-scale systems and perhaps even air travel, you've seen a much larger ding, spiking higher and dropping us into negative nanotesla. For your reference, the 1859 Carrington event was likely around negative 900 nanotesla. Now let's get down to that level of detail with Hawaii. Another day, another 5.3 volcano eruption. It does seem we're stuck at that magnitude, and some are asking why. The best answer is that seismographs are bad at gauging volcanoes. USGS made this page with the micro-rad readings from the volcanic eruptions, electric tilt due to eruptive behavior, and you can see we do have much more variability than is suggested by the quake list, with the early June events topping out both charts, so at least that part is consistent. On that page, linked below, you also have the magnetic reversal data from the lava flow, still confined to a localized GPS thing and has no effect just a few miles away, but certainly interesting that the lava that cooled before the last magnetic reversal is coming out now. Folks, this is the site in Michigan. Many have already seen the damage, but what you might not have seen was how a highway of strong storms took a major intensification, that is literally a storm of a different color. And what was normally isolated flashing from the lightning detector returned nearly statewide flashes entering the upper peninsula, the big ones there. Up next, we're on the other side of the world, flights canceled and highways jammed due to decreased visibility as shifting winds brought African dust and sand aloft towards the Middle East. Top papers from yesterday include one on the solar wind, it is not a chaotic, individualized mixture of independent waves and structure, but an ensemble preserving total linear wave properties among the vast field. And for our cosmology buffs, cold, neutral, and warm interstellar medium. The warm makes up 52% of the mass from our visibility range, and this new analysis suggests we miss the temperature by a significant margin. Space is hotter than predicted by steady-state models. Lastly, folks, with three days left in pre-registration for Observing the Frontier 2019, I'm going to show the tentative schedule of blocks for Friday through Sunday. A lot happening Friday this year, so it's a full three days of events. Pause the video if you want to see something more closely or just wait for more information. Either way, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.